Have you ever wondered what foods might be increasing your risk of cancer? It's a question that has been at the forefront of medical research for many decades now. As our understanding of the human body and its complex workings evolves, so too does our understanding of the profound impact our diet can have on our overall health and specifically, on our risk of developing cancer. Let's start by acknowledging a simple yet profound truth. Our diet plays a significant role in our health. It's not just about staying fit or keeping off those extra pounds. The food we consume fuels our bodies, providing the nutrients we need to function optimally. But what happens when the fuel we provide our bodies is less than ideal? Well, that's where things get a bit tricky. You see, certain foods, or more accurately, certain components found in foods can indeed increase our risk of developing cancer. For example, foods that are high in certain types of fats or that are heavily processed can all contribute to an increased risk of cancer. The same goes for foods that are high in sugar or salt. It's not that these foods directly cause cancer per se. Rather, they contribute to conditions in the body that can make it easier for cancer cells to grow and multiply. Now does this mean that we should all be living on a strict diet of raw vegetables and whole grains? Not necessarily. It's all about balance and moderation. A diet that is rich in diverse, nutrient-dense foods can help to protect against many types of cancer. But here's the thing. Understanding the connection between diet and cancer is just the first step. The next step is learning about specific foods that are linked to an increased risk of cancer, so that we can make informed decisions about our diet. Now that we've established the connection between diet and cancer, let's dive into the specific foods that you may want to avoid. First on our list are processed meats. Let's delve into what processed meats really are. These are essentially meats that have been preserved by smoking, curing, salting, or adding preservatives. They include the likes of hot dogs, sausages, bacon, and even some forms of ham and salami. Now, why are they on our radar? Well, research has shown a significant link between the consumption of processed meats and an increased risk of colorectal cancer. The World Health Organization's International Agency for Research on Cancer has classified processed meats as a Group 1 carcinogen. This puts them in the same category as tobacco smoking and asbestos, but it doesn't mean they are equally dangerous, just that there's convincing evidence that they can cause cancer. This risk is not merely hypothetical. A comprehensive review of more than 800 studies worldwide by the International Agency for Research on Cancer found that for every 50 grams of processed meat eaten daily, the risk of colorectal cancer increases by about 17%. 50 grams of processed meat is roughly equivalent to a couple of slices of ham or bacon, or a small hot dog. The exact reason for this link is not entirely clear, but it is believed that certain chemicals used in the processing of these meats, such as nitrates and nitrites, could be the culprits. These chemicals can form nitrosamines in our bodies which are potent carcinogens. It's important to clarify here that this doesn't mean you need to completely eliminate processed meats from your diet. Moderation is key. The occasional hot dog at a baseball game or bacon at brunch is not going to dramatically increase your cancer risk. It's frequent high consumption that's the problem. So how can we tweak our diet to mitigate this risk? One way is to substitute processed meats with healthier alternatives like lean meats, poultry, fish, or plant-based proteins. Reducing the intake of processed meats can be a significant step towards lowering your cancer risk. Remember, every little bit helps when it comes to maintaining your health. Next up, we have sugary drinks. Now, when you think of sugary drinks, soda probably springs to mind. But this category also includes beverages like sweetened iced teas, energy drinks, and even some fruit juices. These drinks share a common feature. They're often packed with sugar and offer little to no nutritional value. Here's where the problem lies. These drinks are filled with what we call empty calories. This means that while they provide energy in the form of calories, they lack essential nutrients like vitamins, minerals, and fiber. The body needs these nutrients for essential functions, so when you consume empty calories, you're not giving your body what it needs to thrive. And what happens when you consume these empty calories? Well, they can contribute to weight gain. When you drink a soda or a sugary coffee drink, you're taking in extra calories without getting any nutritional benefits. And if you're not burning off these extra calories through physical activity, they can lead to weight gain. Weight gain in turn can lead to obesity. And here's where the link to cancer comes in. Obesity is a risk factor for several types of cancer, including breast, colon, kidney, and esophageal cancers. And that's not all. Obesity can also increase the risk of heart disease, type 2 diabetes, and other serious health conditions. 
So, the connection between sugary drinks and cancer isn't direct, but rather, it's a domino effect. Consuming sugary drinks can lead to weight gain, which can lead to obesity, which can increase the risk of certain types of cancer. The bottom line is this. While it's okay to enjoy a sugary drink occasionally, it's important to be mindful of your consumption. Opt for drinks that provide nutritional benefits like water, unsweetened tea, or even a homemade smoothie. Remember while these drinks may seem harmless, they can have a significant impact on your health. So choose wisely and drink responsibly. Stay tuned as we delve into our next topic, alcohol and its links to cancer. Another common culprit in our diets is alcohol. Often enjoyed socially or as a way to unwind, alcohol is an integral part of many cultures and lifestyles. However, it's important to be aware of the potential risks that come with its consumption, particularly its link to various types of cancer. Consider this. When you consume alcohol, it's broken down into a chemical called acetaldehyde. This substance is a carcinogen and can damage our DNA and proteins, leading to mutations that may result in cancer. Let's delve deeper into the types of cancer associated with alcohol. First, we have breast cancer. Studies indicate that even moderate drinking can increase a woman's risk. This is possibly due to how alcohol can raise estrogen levels which are linked to certain types of breast cancer. Next, we have cancers of the mouth, throat, and esophagus. These are particularly prevalent among individuals who both drink and smoke as these substances can work together to significantly increase one's risk. Then, there's liver cancer. Chronic, heavy drinking can lead to cirrhosis a serious liver disease that greatly increases the risk of liver cancer. Alcohol can also affect the absorption of vital nutrients. It can hinder the body's ability to break down and absorb nutrients like vitamins A, C, D, E, and the B vitamins. These nutrients are essential for our body's repair system, and their deficiency can leave our cells more vulnerable to cancer. It's worth noting that the risk doesn't necessarily lie in the type of alcohol you drink, be it beer, wine, or spirits but rather in the amount. So, what's the takeaway here? It's not about completely removing alcohol from your life unless you choose to do so. Rather, it's about being aware and making informed decisions about your consumption. Remember, no amount of alcohol is considered safe in terms of cancer risk, but the risk is indeed lower with moderate consumption compared to heavy drinking. Moderation is key when it comes to alcohol consumption. As we near the end of our discussion, let's summarize our findings. We've delved into the correlation between diet and cancer, uncovering some significant links. Firstly, we explored the association between processed meats and cancer risk. We found that these foods, including sausages, bacon, and salami, can potentially increase the risk of certain types of cancer, particularly colorectal cancer. This is due to the presence of harmful substances like nitrates, nitrites, and other carcinogens that form during the preservation process. Next, we delved into the realm of sugary drinks and their connection to obesity-related cancers. These beverages, laden with excessive amounts of sugar, can lead to unhealthy weight gain, thereby increasing the risk of various cancers. These include breast, colon, endometrial, kidney, and esophageal cancers, to name a few. We also took a look at alcohol and its links to cancer. We found that alcohol, when consumed excessively, can increase the risk of several types of cancer, including mouth, throat, esophageal, liver, and breast cancers. This is due to the fact that the body converts alcohol into a potent carcinogen known as acetaldehyde. Throughout our discussion, one thing remained constant, the importance of a balanced diet and maintaining a healthy weight. By focusing on a diet rich in fruits, vegetables, lean proteins, and whole grains, we can help to reduce our risk of cancer. Likewise, maintaining a healthy weight can also play a significant role in cancer prevention. In conclusion, while we can't control all the factors that increase our risk of cancer, we can certainly influence many of them through our dietary choices. By being mindful of what we consume, we can promote our overall health and well-being, potentially reducing our cancer risk in the process. While it's impossible to completely eliminate the risk of cancer, being mindful of what we consume can go a long way in promoting overall health and well-being.